Well, hello, hello, hello. How is everybody? Very, very good evening, afternoon to you, wherever you are. Today is the 10th of September. Hope everybody's having a great day wherever you are. Big thank you to Jane, my wife, uh, for being on Monday Funday yesterday with us. Uh, it was a blast. We had enjoyed ourselves. We always do on a Monday, uh, bringing a bit of humour and lightheartedness to you all uh, on a Monday to get your on passive week off to a good start. Uh, as far as on passive is concerned, um, tomorrow is looking like uh, on passive 360 day, and it's also looking like it's going to be around about uh, 2 p.m. Eastern daylight time. Obviously, this will all be confirmed uh, by Marty uh, tomorrow at some point. And obviously, as always, our CEO Ash Mufara will be the link and invited to it. And fingers crossed, we will have the privilege of seeing him on, on Passive 360 tomorrow. Kind of guessing that he might be on, but obviously there is no guarantees and it's normally very late minute anyway. But today I have a very special guest with me in the chair. Uh, he is probably the second most recognized face in on Passive after our CEO. And he really is a legend to us all. He is uh, a, an amazing guy. I've known him uh, for a very long time now. We're going to talk about that. And he has done so much for our business in one way, shape or form. He's got the biggest heart of anybody that I know within on Passive. And it really is my pleasure uh, to bring in to the chair, Mr. Marty DeGarmo. Marty, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. I'm happy as a lark. How are you? <laughs> oh, very well, mate. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to ask you to come in the chair. It's going to be uh, very interesting to find out a little bit about you. And as a bonus, we've also got uh, Mr. Chris Johnson. He's coming in the chair as well on Friday. So there's no getting away uh, for anybody today. So as always, Marty, uh, the chair's all about finding out a little bit more about you. Now, as I said earlier, uh, I do know you from before on Passive. But before we get into that, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you live, you've, where you're from, and your family members, and what work you did before uh, you retired. Or right. you know, I'll try to be quick. You know how I am. I'm going to be quick. Um, you don't have to be quick, mate. born in Kansas believe it or not, with Dorothy and Toto. Uh, I don't remember it. I was only a little kid. We traveled a lot. My father was in the military. He was in the Army for 20 years. Um, then we moved all over. We wound up in New Jersey. Fort Dix is the base he was stationed at before he retired. We, I had uh, five brothers and sisters. I had, um, I had three brothers and two sisters. Uh, the oldest brother was Earl. Uh, he was killed in Vietnam in 1968. He was a ranger in the army. Um, a second oldest brother was Michael Ray DeGarma. Uh, sad enough, he was killed in a car accident two years later. He was also 20 years old. And then my last brother won eight years difference. My, my mom and dad had kind of like two families. Had the first three boys and then later had two girls and then a one girl, me, and another girl. And Dave, my brother I was closest to in age, he passed away in 98. Uh, he had a heart attack. But all of we had we were a very close family. Like I said, we lived in a house that really couldn't hold that many people. My dad was about five eight and all my brothers are six foot tall. I'm six three. I used to be six three, I'm probably six two now. Um, and then, uh, I went to school everywhere around here, never took a bus. Everything was close enough. I graduated in 1978, uh, barely got by in school. I was bored to death. I hated school. Sorry about that. Probably not good for the kids to hear this, but then I started, I started working right away. In fact, I worked in 16. I worked in, and I went to school at the same time. They had a special program. So I worked in the morning, went to school in the afternoon. When I graduated, I went into a, a company that my brother was working for, and they made copper foil for the circuit board industry. I went there in 1978 in the summer, 
And then in 79, there was a probation. They kept me full time. And I worked from there. I worked there from 79 to 2004. Uh, I was a GMO5, which is general maintenance. I was the gopher, go get this, go get that. Then I was a machine operator. Then I was a lead man. Then I wound up in the, I was a union representative uh, shop store. And then I became supervisor of the company. And then I became a manager. Then I became a department manager. And then uh, the company was shut down in 2001 uh, because of competition around the world. Uh, we just could not make the, the product cheap enough to compete. And that has to do with the way you started, right? You, companies build, the newer companies built for efficiency, and we didn't. So anyway, but we had the technology, thank God. So when they shut down in 2001, they kept five of us, me and four other guys. And we traveled around the world um, selling technologies, building the equipment. And then I would go in, start the equipment, and train the employees. And I did this all over the place. I loved it. It wasn't real good for family, though, because my kids were just getting into high school and all that. It was kind of a nightmare. And I used to have to stand on the hill in Russia so I could get on a, a cellular um, phone <laughs> that ran off of a uh, satellite, a satellite phone. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I, I look back now, at a certain time, and they were we were 12 hours ahead or something. I was in... It was a nightmare, but you could communicate. But I love that. Well, then I wound up getting, I had sleep apnea for a year and didn't know it. So I did some damage to my young, lungs. And then I got out of that and they they told me you're going to be out of work for a while. I got out of work and they kept testing me and goes, you're going to be out of work forever. I'm like, oh, that's great. So I wound up on disability and I said, what the heck? So and how, how, old, how old were you then, Marty? I was 42 years old. Wow. Yeah. And then and then my life was, I'm not going to sit around. This was working okay. Well, at least I thought. And that's where I jumped into online work. So if you, you want to go from there, I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, no, no. That's, uh, yeah, it's a, a good stopping place, isn't it? Is, is that, uh, you know, in life, curveballs uh come your way and it's how you deal with them that make the difference and obviously you know you've already said that you loved your work you loved the travel even though it was uh not very good for family and all the rest of it and obviously you wanted to support your family in any way you could so let's talk about you getting into uh, online uh, business or work or whatever you want to call it just talk us through those really, really early days of the sort of things that you were doing in those early days in uh, 2004 and around about there, because that was early, early days, wasn't it? As far as the Internet was concerned, yeah. uh, you know, 20 odd years ago now. Uh, so just talk to us a little bit about those. OK, Facebook had just started, right? It was another name. I don't know what it was called. Uh, whatever. Um, it was nothing yet. Um, I got on and I and I was looking. Now, remember, I left something that I really loved. So I thought this can't be my this can't be my peak. Right, I'm 42. I figured I've got a lot more to do. So I went online and I said, I see people are making money online. A lot of email stuff because email starting to crank it up. Wasn't a whole lot of you could get away with almost anything. They didn't have what you call spam and all that. I mean, they did, but they weren't pushing it like they do now. So I got on, I got a business, can't even tell you which one, and started looking at what I thought I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. I didn't know who they were, but whoever they were, we called them the gurus. And they would tell you, just do what I'm doing, or she would say it. And I tried. And then I realized, well, how am I going to get traffic? Well, years ago, they had things called traffic exchanges and safe list and solo ads. So me, brain, Brainiac, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a traffic exchange. So I bought one. I bought the script. Then I hired somebody to help me make it. Got all the stuff for it. Had a few thousand people on it. It was a full-time job to run it, and there's no money in it. So I'm kind of defeating the purpose. 
Anyway, as time went on, I realized there's always something missing. First, it was you start to know the company and they disappear overnight. The next one you get in, you got to get people, you got to recruit. So I went to the family and friends and, and some of them joined me. They know me. They knew I'm me I still meant it. No, 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 we'll do fine. And I realized I can't even do fine. I mean, it, it, when you celebrate that you broke even, that's not a good thing. <laughs> and most of the people with me didn't even break even. So I went, man, I got to know more. I need to learn more. I'm missing something. And the ugly thing about MLM or uh, drop shipment or, is every time you learn something and you flip that rock over, and Red knows what I mean, you find another something you didn't know you didn't know. Oh, yeah. crap. Well, you gotta you got to get traffic. How? Well, you could buy it. Okay. Now let's remember, we all got in this to make money and I'm losing money and I'm already making less money because I'm on disability. I'm not, I'm barely surviving. So that went on, you buy traffic, it's garbage. You might get a couple more people. The problem is momentum is never going. Everybody riles you up, but they, a couple of days later, you find yourself reality is I can't bring in people quick as they would quit. And why are they quitting? They're not making any money. Same as me. Only difference was yeah. I was bullheaded, and I said, no, if it's working, we got to find out how to make it work. Time went on, four or five years, and uh, I said, i got to learn how to drive traffic, like actual pay for it, and learn how to drive it. So I got into Facebook, and they had a thing called lead ads, and I started doing them, and months went by. No good. Facebook would say, nope, you can't have that ad. Nope, you can't use those words. Then you get it, you get a business, you start doing it, the company folds. So all the branding you did disappeared. This went on a long time. Well, most of you know this. Then I ran into Mike Ellis and Dan Street. Mike first, what, then Dan. What sort of time what sort of time of uh, uh, when was this and what year did you meet uh, Dan I, and Mike? I think I I think I ran into them 2013, 2014, 10, 11 years ago. Okay. Yeah. But but I also realize I'm, I have a judgment of time is horrible because yeah, yeah. I know now that I work, we did crypto seven years ago. It doesn't feel like that to me. So it, it could be longer than that, but something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and we found out. So we're all looking. I knew at that point I'm looking for unpassive. I'm looking for something like that because I can't duplicate. I can't get people to duplicate what I'm doing. That's a lie. They lied to all of us. They did it to all everybody. Not on purpose. I think they meant it. Some of them meant it. Yeah, do what I'm doing. But it's, it's impossible. And the thing about learning to market is it changes all the time. It's a moving target. What works by, I hear people go, I made seven figure income in 2000. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. It's a different world. It, 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 what you did then may not work now. Anyway, so I got where we could drive traffic and we could drive pretty good. I mean, we could build teams of thousands wherever we went. Problem is, it always went back to what is the company? Who's running the company? And are they honest? And the answer is no, sometimes no and never. Okay. It was always <laughs> negative. And I met Red and Peter and a few other people in, the, in another business before this one. That was that must have been, I think, uh, 2015, yeah. I reckon, or 2016. Some, about yeah, 2016, yeah, yeah. I we, think it probably we was. We were in a couple of different ones, I believe. Yeah. And we went in, and I, me, a good student, and the last one, I followed the guy, everything he said. Red took off. Peter took off because they were smarter than me. Mike <laughs> goes, we got to go, man. You're, you're not learning anything here. So... We left, and and that was uh, 2019, by well, the end of 2018, and I started looking around, and, and I never really looked. When I did something, I was dedicated. I didn't look at anything else, and I remember Red and Peter, and Peter I saw first. I said, what are you doing? And he started telling me about uh, on passive and what the game plan was and what they thought it might be, and I went, whoa. 
when I found out Red's there too, because they work together all the time too. We got together, we met, what's this about? But then we asked a bunch of questions and off to the races. And then since I've been an unpassive, obviously um, I don't think of anything else. I don't I don't have any anxiety of what might be going on or what not. I don't like what's going on. I know it's not good, but I know one thing that uh, I have some we have someone working for us harder than we would, and I I work pretty damn hard. And that's a pretty that's a pretty cool thing to say. And uh, and I met a lot of people like Red and Jane. Um, I've known Red, like I said, for years. In fact, I remember coming in and Red was somewhere and I got a hold of him because we were starting to do more video type stuff. Yeah, I yeah. already started in fact, and, and I said, fact, Red, I, get I, your butt out here, man. Yeah. I, I, in fact, anyway, it ahead. was actually Marty who who was the one was is really is the guy who said, "Listen, you you've got a bit of character about it. You need to start doing some videos." And this was actually before uh, on passive because the the last person or the last um, business that we were doing together, it had it had all the hallmarks of uh, teaching us some really uh, important. Um, lessons for online uh, entrepreneurship marketing whatever you want the if, if the way that it was set up and structured made an awful lot of sense and to be fair to the guy he had put an awful lot of work into putting this structure together to teach people what they needed to do uh but it's always the same thing isn't it the proof is in the pudding and unfortunately he wasn't a very good baker uh, and he kept on promising and kept we kept uh, obviously paying on a monthly basis for his expertise and it, we were getting nowhere and after when getting nowhere you start standing back and thinking uh, well hang on a minute you know something's not adding up even though the advice and the teachings he was giving us helped an awful lot it certainly didn't help us in the way that we wanted to financially so I left and then uh, the rest is history, what Marty's saying. So let's bring this back round to uh, on passive. And I can remember when we had those first meetings, uh, Marty, and we, um, myself and Peter, well, mainly Peter Rogers uh, was telling you about on passive. What were your thoughts about this business in those early days in late 2018, early 2019? Well, I, you know, a normal person would be jaded and not trust anything. My thing is, you have to be brand new wherever you go. If you keep holding on to bad things that happen, you'll never move forward. I knew what I wanted. I, I did it long enough. I knew what I wanted. And when Peter, and then I, when I met uh, Red and Peter together and we met, a lot of boxes were checked, as, as Red would say. Like, you, you don't have a monthly payment out of your pocket. If it's running right, they'll take it out of your profits. And I went, whoa, uh, the structure will be this and this and this and everything. And we're global. For me, uh, yes, I can travel. I can knock on doors. I could do, but you have the internet. Let's use it. As built mm -hmm. through all of us, a billion dollar company and you don't have to leave home. Not really. If you use the internet to a, its fullest, and I love that idea. And here's the main thing. And Red said this one time before we even got here. I tell you what, I'm not doing another business that doesn't have viable products, products we can buy, and, and you own it, and then you, you know, even if you got to rebuy it every month. But, and I, I agreed 100%. I don't want pie in the sky. I did. I never wanted that. And then I, I thought after they told me. How much is it? No, no kidding. Peter said 97 and I'm thinking $970. Ooh, that's going to be rough. But come to find out it was $97. And then I went the other way. I went, why is he doing it so cheap? See, I'm thinking very small. And I'm a big thinker, but I was thinking small, knowing what I know now, that $97, why would he do that? It makes it sound like maybe it's not worth. But then when you hear global, and, you, and I get my big ass out of New Jersey and realize that most of the world 
they, that's who he was talking to. That's who the payment was for. It would be very difficult for most of the world to pay it, but they could. They could at least get skin in the game. That made sense to me. Eventually, I started to get, this isn't a focus on US or UK or Canada. It's focused on everybody in the world. And then I, I remember at that point, somehow I wanted to talk to Ash because just like Red, I, I have, I know I can get, I know we could get people to see it. But I really got, I really got a, um, a bad taste about burning people. Even though you can bring them in, I mean, if you could be yeah, cold hearted yeah. and everybody's a number, okay, but that part bothered me. But once I, we did meet with him and I found out who he is and I believed him, that's a big deal. Um, the rest is history. So, so let me let me ask you then, uh, Marty. Ob obviously, it's, this is really interesting to uh, listen to you talk about uh, what you saw in on passive and all the rest of it. But I always I did know from a very early point that one of your goals was certainly to actually meet Ash Mufara uh, virtually face to face in 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 uh, in uh, the best context. So, can you sort of tell us in your own words? Why do you think that you and him get on so well? Uh, is, is what what is your connection? Do you think that you have uh, with Ashmi Farah? Trust and loyalty. One of the main. Um, there was a couple instances that went on, and I I would see people kind of try to manipulate situations, whether he's there or not, because he's a kind-hearted guy. And I'm a kind-hearted person, but I I got a few rough edges, and and I would I, listen. If you talk about me, it's one thing, but you talk about someone I I I like, like Red, like Ash, like anybody I know, like Chris, like yeah, I mess with Chris. If you don't know him, I don't want you to. That's just it. But I saw his heart, and I. I related to what he was saying, I guess, and I, and some most of the time in the beginning, when we talked, it wasn't a, it wasn't about business. He wanted to know family and all that. We got talking, and and he became, he became a friend, and he's a friend of everybody. Yeah, and I don't know. I just, it, it really wasn't planned that way. It was more of a. I was there and then like you read i just i dove in i don't do i've never done anything a little i and when i smoked i smoked too much when i drank i drank too much when i worked i worked too much but this is something that it covers every base i ever wanted my old business and then now i loved working with people that's when i traveled around i loved i met people in japan and UK and uh, France and Luxembourg. I went to Taiwan and I found that everybody I met besides management or government, we all want the same thing. And when I realized yeah, this platform that Ash was building for all of us, it blew me away. How could I not fall in love with the guy? I mean, I just, th there's no hidden agenda. I mean, he says what he means. He means what he says. And when he said the other day, the most devastating, the happiest day he saw in all of them passive, since we've all been in and Red's over six years, is the day he started paying people. I knew when that bubbled and yeah, fell, yeah. without a doubt, that was devastating for us before. Because one of the first conversations we had, and Red knows this, is paying nobody wants to pay more than that he would pay and not yeah. receive money by the way he's not making money on non-passive zero zero i mean down the road i hope he does i mean that's why you do it but his whole outlook was about people and that's what turned me on to him and his wife his wife is uh amazing because she's getting beat up just like he is and uh yeah it's a great family and uh yeah yeah 
and he cares. Like I, I we have some issues. There's nobody here now. Uh, I adopted. We adopted our grandchildren, and they have social social issues, especially the older girl, because she's a teenager. And we sent her to counseling. And the biggest person that helped her was Red Red and uh, Jane's daughter, without a doubt. Without to this That's day, very very if telling. she has an issue, she'll call her. No joke, because she could relate. Yeah, yeah. She was in that that area. I don't know. And I'm a grandfather, so she'll relate, but not the same with somebody that knows. And it, it's a big deal. So, yeah, I mean, it's all about people. And with Ash, if I if I, if I didn't know him in on passive, I would definitely be as close a friend as I am now, or, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know that um, especially men, many of us who are the loud speakers, I suppose, of on passive, our thought process and drive is not necessarily about uh, how much money we can make and all the rest of it. We do what we do because we genuinely want to ha help the business and help as many people out there by doing what we're doing. So let me ask you, uh, Marty, what, what dreams and goals have you got for your own personal uh, family around you uh, that you want to achieve with on passive uh that's probably the hardest question you asked the whole time um <laughs> i, I want to get out of shut up i want to get out of debt i don't want to i don't want to think about money red that's my main goal i don't want to think about it. if the car breaks down i can fix it if i get in a store and somebody needs cash and they're they're embarrassed because they're digging in a person they know there's nothing in there to pay the way without them even knowing uh, because I believe you can bless people right outside your door. Uh, that would be phenomenal for me. But a big deal, I didn't realize what how much a big deal, even though I, I do talk to Ash sometimes, God's honest truth. I talk to him about everyone here. Yeah. I, 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 I hated LC. Uh, I hope, I mean, I, I, I was involved with some people they picked. But what I didn't like about it is some people took it too far here and they let go of this, right? We're here to serve. The biggest server in the company is Ash. Why do I, I need to be a that, general? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. There's a, listen, everybody knows who Red is, no matter what bars he has on his shoulder or if he has stars. Same for me. You know who I am? That's why I shine the light or in the chair. We're pointing out to other people because I've met a lot of cool people. I'm telling you. And I always, even in a webinar for the last five years, I, I would text ask, this lady would come off, oh, this lady's phenomenal. She this, this, and this. Just to give them an idea, because I'm, me and Red and Chris and other people are everywhere. So I get a glimpse at people ahead of time. But I feel, for me personally, and I believe Red does too, and, and I, I know a lot of people do, is the more people we push to the top, the stronger the core, the stronger the core, the stronger the business, the stronger Absolutely, the core. Yeah. Without a doubt. Like when we first got in, we built, we we said, let's get to know people. This was very small thinking, all right, because I didn't know what the company was going to do, but we built on Passive Nation because I want them to know who I am. Now, let me tell you something. In most business and MLM and, and Red knows you may not want people to know who you are. Why? Because it could crash and burn in a week. No, really, Red. If, it, if, yes, it, if something true. happens now, God forbid, and it won't because Ash will never give up, they're going to come back and look at people they see. But in this case, everybody sees Ash before. That's a big deal. That's a big, it big is. deal. My goals are get debt free. Um, I would like have Dawn to have a better life uh, because she's raised two families now. We've adopted a boy years ago, and it's always she's right now she's hustling. She has to go take Shorty to the the doctor to get a physical, and then she's got to run him back. And it's special stuff going on. All three of them see um, people to talk to. Jaden had some anger issues. It all has to do with. When people decide to not be good parents, yeah, the yeah. kids suffer. 
the kids absolutely right, well i i have to so, I have to say what what I have to say what you've done personally looking after your grandkids and bringing them into your family uh, really truly is inspiring to so many people Marty because it is especially at your ages it is something that uh, is done without a, without a shadow of doubt out of love um, because it's certainly not something you particularly want to be doing um, but they they're your flesh and blood so uh, I I've I actually take my hat off to you uh, for doing what you've done. And it really does show the true character of Marty, DeGamo and Dawn uh, that they are doing what they're doing. So, Marty, just to close this out, um, what closing words have you got for everybody moving forward uh, in on passive and where you think things are going to uh, go as far as the business is concerned? Well, I've said this a long, long time ago, about a, about a year ago, okay. less than a year, eight, nine months ago, I didn't, I felt something wasn't quite right. I might've said something to read or whatever I did, didn't like certain things. And then with this going on and hearing that there was some issues that were very bad, I thought, now that makes sense. What I felt, what I thought about, that made sense. I, and I did not know. Uh, I believe this. And I've said this in the beginning, I'm going to say it again. I'll, I'll probably say it a few more times. Who knows? Amazon created 40,000 millionaires. And I'm going to get financial just for a minute. And, and it's not about money because I might think the money's there. If you look at the ingredients and you get all the ingredients and it says it's a cake, it's a freaking cake. If you have the ingredients of Unpassive and the leader like Mr. Mufara, it equals wealth. I believe Unpassable will produce more millionaires than any company that ever existed on the planet. <laughs> because of the design. Shut up, shut up. Oh my God. Shut up. God, I'll be quick. But that's what I believe. But I also believe we're all very, very fortunate. But I also think the people that told you no, they'll be in. And there's other people out there waiting for Unpassable because they need it socially financially um give them a, a a leg up because everybody deserves a better life and i think you can't rely on government nor should we we could be our own government our own resources and help one another and and if everybody can take care of themselves and has excess or abundance to take care of others this would be the most powerful company most impactful company in the world and you should thank God that you're part of it. I believe that with all my heart. I think every day, my gosh, I'm so I'm so fortunate to be here. No matter what we tripped over or fell down, because in my vision, somebody's walking through the ambers and smoke and flames, and when he comes out, it's Ash Mufara. He could have ran. A normal person would have ran. I, I can't do anymore, but he didn't. Anyway. Absolutely, absolutely, Marty. You're, uh, very wise words, and you're absolutely right. More than more than ever, people need on passive. Uh, they might not realise it just yet, uh, but when they see it, it, certainly will. Marty, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the chair. Uh, I hope all the listeners have enjoyed listening to your story of your life and your journey in on passive. I certainly have done. It's been truly amazing. It really has. You're a fantastic friend to me, Marty. Uh, I love what you do uh, as a person, human being, and also for all of us in Unpassive. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, guys, I've still got one opening uh, for in the chair for this week if you want to come on and be in the esteemed position that Marty DeGamo and Ash Mufara have been in, in the chair with me. Friday, we've got Another legend in the making, Chris Johnson. So he will be in on Friday. Uh, keep an eye out for the link for 360. Marty will get that out as soon as we have a bit more information. But that's it for us. Thank you, guys.